said last week about putting Paris back there. When you have two returners back on a kickoff, what what's the difference there? What's the benefits of that? Uh, just more personnel driven, you know, uh, depending on the formations that we use, it depends on who we have up, who's available, and uh, you know, and, and just being able to get his speed on the field definitely and definitely helps. And we're we're moving in a better direction when it comes to that. What are you? Because of using two or, or what? Yeah, yeah, just having a little bit more speed on the field. What do you think of uh, Paris's return? It, it wasn't bad. Uh, we could have blocked it up better, uh, but no, it, it was it was what I expected. Uh, even though it is as as clean as I wanted it to be, it wasn't. And then for him to get to where he got to without it being clean and just using natural run skills. That's kind of what we were expecting from him. So we just got to get better, just up front, just making sure that we're finishing blocks, being in the right spots, taking better angles, just details of our job. That's it. Why didn't you give uh, Jameson Crowder, why didn't he get more of a look at punt returner here? You know, it, all those guys were back there, you know, returning kicks every day, returning punts every day. It was just more of uh, trying to get Eric Gray comfortable. You know, we knew what Jameson was. You know, he's done it in the past, and we knew he had the ability to do it. But, uh, you know, just trying to get Eric back there comfortable doing it again. T Mac, would you care to say that Jamie's taking the next step this year? And what do you attribute that to? You know, yeah, he's, he's definitely taking a step forward. Uh, I, I think I attribute it to him just getting more comfortable in who he is and uh, just trying to use his skill set better. Uh, you know, those rugby guys, I mean, it's, they're different. Like Jamie's one of the best ball strikers I've ever coached and he can, you know, he can hit a variety of different punts, you know, so just trying to do a better job as a coach managing him, trying to put him in a position where he feels, feels comfortable. And he's not thinking, he's just letting that muscle memory kick in. And, uh, but he's done a really good job of developing his routine and you know coming out here and just working hard and just trying to work at the different types of kicks that he has. Was that a change that, that you guys made? Like just intentionally saying, all right, Jamie, we're gonna let you, you know, give you a little bit more freedom to do some of the things that, that you're more comfortable? Cause it didn't, that style seemed to be out of his game last year. Yeah, I mean, it's something that we definitely, you know, we went towards last year, if you remember the last part of the year, we used it a couple times. And, uh, you know, just, again, allowing him to mature as a, as a pro, with, you know, and just understanding who he is as a coach and just trying to put him in the best position where he can maximize his, his talents and his abilities. T Mac, back to Crowder for a second. And he's made a couple of big plays for Washington. Um, did you still think he had that in him? Yeah, I mean, he's he's a good player. I mean, Jameson, I'm not going to take anything away from Jameson. Jameson's a really good player. Um, and he did, a, like I said, he did a good job while he was here. You know, he's at Buffalo, he's done it. You know, Jets, he's did it. So, yeah, he's he's having a good year. He is. I mean, he's he had, you know, a 61 yarder last week. That was a, that was a big return, you know. So, no, he's, he's doing a good job for him. Make this is more of a general uh, philosophical question, not related necessarily to you, but you got a couple teams in the league this year that went away from veteran kickers who have been very, very successful and consistent. Obviously, with Gould in San Francisco and um, and Folk in New England, and so far six games in, it hasn't looked like it's worked out for either team. Mm -hmm. You guys have a really good veteran here, obviously, who's been doing it for a bit. How difficult is that when management or whatever wants to go make a change there and, and maybe sees a young guy, they want to try to get younger, longer, whatever it is, when you know you have something good already in hand? Yeah, I mean, that that part of it, the, the decision, that's that's out of my hand. Yeah, but I just mean, it, how difficult, if, as you as a coach, you know, I'm, I'm not looking for you to comment on right. New England or anything like that. I'm just saying, how difficult is that when you... Are you a guy that wants to fight for the guy that's been, been doing it for you? you yeah, know, you, al you always want to have the veteran guy. I mean, when you have a proven guy, like, you don't ever want to give away a proven guy. Like, you get a guy that's that's done it for a long time because, you know, I, I tell people this all the time. It's like, you know, once you get on the kicker train, 
the destination is unknown. So when you want, when you're on, when you're on that train that's been steady and you know the destination, you know exactly where you're going. You like to ride on that train, but when you get one, you really don't know. You think you know, but you really don't know until you know. It could, you could be anywhere. You can look up and you could be halfway across the world, you know, before you find another one. You know, so it's just that's, that kicker train is dangerous. It can take you anywhere. I was going to say, how much are you happy that you're not on the kicker train? Yeah, I love it. <laughs> I love it. Trust me. I love it. Nick, on the end of the half, um, how say much, again. on the play at the end of the half there, mm -hmm. and situations like that, how much are you involved knowing where it's a tight situation? Hey, we're going to need X amount of seconds to run our guys out there. And do you discuss the play calling in that moment with them? Yeah, I mean, it, we got a lot of, you know, we practice stuff every day. Like today, we'll literally go through one of the same situations. We do it every Thursday. And, uh, you know, we talk about it. And, you know, it's just, we got guys that, we, we are all talking about it at the same time. We kind of know what we're gonna do and how we're gonna do it, how we're gonna handle it. Um, but there's definitely a plan, you know, going into those situations. And we're talking constantly on the headsets, too. Like throughout the whole drive. Like it's, you know what I mean? It's not just like, we get down there, we just start to talk about it. We talk, we're talking about it all the way through the drive, so. What, make, oh, sorry, what makes uh, Tressway like, so challenging to field, and, and how do you get Eric uh, prepared for that? Yeah, well, the good thing about it is Eric sees it every day in practice with Jamie. Like, they're the same style of punter, big lefty power punter. Um, so that's the good thing for us. Another good thing is that we practice out here in, this, in these elements in the wind, even though it's beautiful today. I haven't had any wind. Uh, the last two days and it's going to be 36 mile an hour gust on Sunday so but you know it's that's part of it you know he's get him ready because Tress you know I'll, I was explaining to the guys today in the meeting like he's going he gets great direction he's going to paint the stripes then and then you know he'll hit one short it might roll for 15 20 yards and then he'll hit one deep you know and that's that's just who he is and they do they do a really good job of covering their gunners are really good their interior is good and, and that's why he's been in Pro Bowl a couple times the last two years.